five minutes from now. Let us use our time wisely and search out Christ who alone can reconcile us to our Creator. If you've never taken the simple, simple step of receiving Him as your Savior, I would pray that today would be the day. Let me tell you how you can be sure of a heavenly home with Him who is pictured by the many details we've seen here. Very simple. The Bible shows that there is a tragic state of affairs for man. Our first father was given one command. It was in the negative, don't do this thing, and he did it. He violated God's word, and sin came into the world through him. And all people have sinned because of Adam. We are born in sin, according to the Psalms, even from the moment of our conception. We have Adam's stain of sin on us, and so we're already separated from our Creator. There's nothing that we can do to be reconciled to God on our own. We cannot work our way to heaven, and we've seen pictures of people trying to do this already through the Bible, and we'll see them all the way through. People working their little towers of Babel, trying to get back to heaven, doing little deeds of righteousness that can never satisfy an angry God, a God who is fiercely angry at the sins of humanity. Only God can reconcile it, and he did. He stepped out of his eternal realm, all pictured by the things we're gonna be seeing in the weeks ahead and he united with human flesh. Coming from this stream of humanity, which he plundered, and we saw some of those today, Ahithophel goes to Jesus. Bathsheba goes to Jesus. Rahab the harlot goes to Jesus. All these people, these wicked people, all the way through the Bible, lead to the pure and unstained, undefiled redeemer. It's amazing, he plundered humanity, and yet he comes out perfect, pure, and holy just as we're seeing. And then he lived that life under that law that he's giving to us perfectly. The law only condemns us. Paul explains that in the book of Romans and in the book of Galatians. It's only there to show us how utterly sinful sin is and to show us our desperate need for something else, one who can fulfill the law in our place. And so he did, he fulfilled it. And then in the greatest act of grace and mercy in all of human history, he gave that sinless, perfect life up on the cross of Calvary in order to take away your sin. He says, if you'll simply look to the cross, just as the people in the Old Testament look to the, the serpent on the pole, by an act of faith alone, I will impute to you my righteousness, and you will be as if you have never sinned in the eyes of God. And without him, there is no reconciliation with him. But through Jesus Christ, there is fellowship. There's a propitious relationship. You stand justified by the things this law could never do. And it's all pictured in what we're looking at today.